Hey everybody, uh, great to uh, have you here today and I'm looking forward to uh, being a little bit of a purple squirrel, I call it, with, uh, in the crypto world. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about Funware and Funcoin. Uh, Funware, though, it's important to understand who we are because we're actually about to be a 10-year-old uh, company. Uh, we're going to be going public uh, literally in June. And we raised about $100 million to actually kick off uh, building out a really awesome platform. When you think of platforms of how people have a right to like build a CRM system or standardize on Salesforce, you think about Facebook going out and building these things like a social cloud. What Funware really set out to do is to own the mobile cloud. We wanted to have a vision to go out and reach every human being on the planet that had a device touching a network that had Funware software in their mobile applications. So all of you are probably familiar with Facebook, obviously building a massive uh, group of people around the world. They did it in a vertical walled garden. They only had five apps. Instagram and WhatsApp they purchased, and obviously three others, Facebook, Messenger, and Moments uh, that they built from scratch. What we really did is we decided to focus on how do you build a network of Funware IDs for all these people around the world but we were going to build our scale to look like Google or Facebook, but do it through hundreds and hundreds of applications of the Fortune 5000. So probably everyone in here that has their mobile phone, we would probably have lots of software on the devices and on the favorite applications that you use, uh, and you really wouldn't know who we are. So what's fascinating about this is we're not doing a white paper, we're not having an idea, we're not trying to figure out how to launch if we raise a big ICO and then go forward. Uh, we raised $100 million and actually have been doing this for the better part of a decade. And over that time, we took a mobile-first approach. We convinced corporations that wanted to focus on digital transformation to figure out how they could focus on these you know, fluffy words like customer experience, customer journey, and then translate that into their identity on mobile through iOS and Android on all these devices. So when we've gone through this, we now actually do over 6 billion transactions a day that's more than a trillion per year, across more than 2.5 billion Funware IDs, of which more than a billion of these are active every single month. What that gives us is a staggering amount of data to focus on a one-to-one -one basis, both indoors and out, and really learn everything about people. The big difference between what you've seen with the congressional hearings recently and what you see with us is you have this wonderful situation where we've always empowered the end user to be in charge. You define whatever mobile experience you want, we'll give you whatever you want, and we'll stay out of the way. And those experiences for all of us are different, whether you're using a Starbucks app, whether you're using a Lowe's app, whether you're a patient and you're going to Kaiser. And what we've done is sat agnostically and said, you know what, if you're familiar with the Internet of Things being the sensors and the chips and the devices and the networking gear and the network, we're a little bit like the software of things where we're actually using the software and the mobile applications to show off how amazing all of that capability is within these networks. Well, as I said, we're, we're also kind of a guinea pig <laughs> to the regulators. We currently have an S4 registration statement pending. We'll hear back from the SEC on that on a traditional go public motion. Uh, and then we'll open for trading as Funware PHUN uh, will be the ticker symbol. But at the same time, we're now kicking off up to a $100 million token generation event. That'll be fully a Reg D compliant piece. And in the history of the world, there's never been a company with two simultaneous offerings that are both pushing $100 million, one for the public markets and one privately. So the team we put together to do this, we've done this a long time. Uh, Luan, I jokingly say, is my Vietnamese twin. Uh, and we've done everything for the better part of the last 20 years. Uh, we've built and sold three companies before, so it's no longer about the money for us. This is about creating a massive multi-billion dollar company in the public markets and being a safe on-ramp for the Fortune 5000 to the world of crypto and networking and smart contracts and blockchain in the same way that you became familiar with Red Hat as a safe way for the Fortune 5000 to bridge into the world of open source and Linux. Um, all the people we put together, uh, I did my graduate work at Georgia Tech for engineering and Berkeley for business. Uh, Randall and I are both ex-Army Rangers, so uh, we really care a lot about, you know, we get to eat, sleep, see our family when we're not on the road and nobody's shooting at us, so it's not so bad. Uh, we enjoy going out and accomplishing big things. 
Uh, we put a team together, folks that did their graduate work in computer science at Stanford, folks that have built inorganically in addition to organically. And what's the point of all this? Well, the point of all this was to say, how do you simultaneously do enterprise software, media, data, and crypto, and have a pure play of the entire mobile ecosystem as an investment opportunity? That's what core funware is. So since everyone likes analogies, if you think of core funware as Amazon AWS, providing infrastructure and software and data, our FunCoin crypto ecosystem is a little bit like Amazon itself and will be the biggest customer of all this data and all this capability we have. We assembled kind of a who's who. We're part of the Draper network of portfolio companies. We've worked with WaveMaker and WaveMaker Genesis. Uh, obviously, Scott Walker and the DNA team. Uh, but we really wanted to do this the right way. When we opened our Telegram account, we put out five audited years from Ernst & Young on the financials of our corporation as if we were already a public company. Um, so we wanted to do everything completely different and try to hold ourselves up to the SEC and say, this is how to do crypto right. This is the way to have the right people involved. And as you can see from the lawyers like Wilson Sonsini to Ernst & Young, we've tried to be gold-plated in everything that we've been doing. Now, what that's allowed us to do over this period is have a who's who. I've done a lot of startups. I've sold three before this, one to Cisco, one to Level 3, and others. But we've been able to get some of the greatest brands in a who's who by vertical. And any of these applications that you have on your devices all have funware software inside. And what's the big point of what we're able to now do with this in the world of crypto? Well, as we got to watch the embarrassing amount of our congressman trying to interview Mark Zuckerberg and how shameful it was, uh, when you go into the Fortune 5000, it's marginally better. And it's not because they don't want it to be better, it's just because it's new. They barely learned the internet, then along came social, now along comes mobile, what is digital transformation. But what we wanted to do is to change the game, and we think we will. We are going to use a sovereign self-identity with biometric encryption on your device, so you get to get control of your identity and your data again. And you can opt into whatever you want to be involved in. And guess what? We're going to give you fun coin cryptocurrency in return. You could say, hey, I'm Alan, a 48-year-old white male from Austin, Texas. I have these likes and interests. Or it can go all the way up to my oldest daughter is going to go to college in the fall and needs a student loan. I'm going to refinance my house in 30 days. I'm going to buy a luxury sedan in 45 days. And when you do this, each one of those segments has wildly different information. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of disintermediate very large players like Facebook and Google and others that actually like to exploit all of us for all of our data and we get nothing in return. So what we're going to do is use crypto as a means to empower you to get control of your identity, to control what data you want to provide, give you compensation for that, and then connect the Fortune 5000 directly into these segments in a way that makes sense. Uh, this has never really been done this way. And as you know, if we were doing 6 billion transactions a day, it would probably melt every blockchain that's out there. Uh, maybe some of the new ones coming, a little bit different, but we'll see. What we do is batch up all that data, we memorialize it on the ledger, and we use blockchain and smart contracts to allow you to set the rules for the use of your data to make sure people are paying you in return for the right to use that data. And we think that's going to be very profound because it re-empowers the world's population. Most importantly, it's going to allow us, through our FunCoin SDK, to solve the chicken and the egg game. We'll be able to turn on tens of millions of digital wallets overnight through our own systems, through our own customers that already exist and have been there as customers of ours for the last 10 years. Usually, it's not a new idea to say, I'm going to compensate you for data. But the issue is, can you flip a switch and have more digital wallets in crypto without people even realizing they're in crypto uh, than Coinbase or every Bitcoin wallet in the world overnight? And that's what we're going to be able to do. So when we do this, uh, we believe that we're going to actually have something very special, very new. We're going to have a pure play for people that like to invest traditionally through Wall Street. We're going to have a pure play for people that we operate a debt-free company, uh, a company that actually is cash neutral next quarter, EBITDA neutral at the end of the year, 
And then once we finish all that, we're gonna raise up to probably $100 million in crypto. That'll be non-dilutive. The first 85 million is tax-free. And we're gonna be able to dynamically and revolutionize the methodology of us consuming data worldwide. Thank you very much. And there's some information for those that wanna either get on the white list when we make this available. Uh, it'll be done privately through coin lists under KYC and, and things of that sort. Thank you very much.